you've given to us that we might have a relationship with you in Jesus name and the church said amen, amen. let's love him for a second thank you God thank you Lord amen. hallelujah you may be seated I'll tell you what I thought it was kind of fun to do things a little differently huh stir we don't have to do things the same every day you know what I'm saying but one thing that I do want to do the same is stay in the word of God that's not something that I want to get away from we can change the order of services. We can change how we do things here and there. But one thing we do not have the authority to change is the gospel. Amen. No one has that authority. And so we've been talking about God's grace and his mercy. And I'm going to talk more specifically on mercy after we're done with grace. Because grace is defined as mercy. But the scripture has all these things it says about grace. But it has even more to say about mercy. So we're going to look into both. And then we're also going to go into specifically what he talks about is love. And then we're going to go in some, some other directions. So I've got some, some plans on where we're going. Uh, like I said, we're a growing church. We're a new church. So, you know, I get to go back to all the old stuff. That I was teaching because I was at a church before I started pastoring here uh, that had uh, a little bit more maturity and depth in terms of bi biblical understanding of the apostolic church. Now I get to go back and go over all the, the basic rooting foundational concepts. And grace is one of them. But let's take a look at what it says here. Paul is saying, look, I am shocked at how quickly you are able to go to another doctrine. That's not really another. You know what that means? That means it looks the same. It sounds the same. But there are some major differences that make it where it is not the gospel of God. Now I'm not here to put anybody down and point fingers. I'm only here to teach you what God gave me to give you. So I can't teach you what someone else has to teach. But I can tell you what to be careful of. That's part of my job is to sound the alarm. The minister or the priest of God has to sound an alarm if there's danger. And if I don't do that, what happens? Someone gets hurt. That's what alarms are for. It's to prepare us so that we understand. Now, I don't think we need to go bad-mouthing people and calling people names. People are teaching whatever they... And some people are very sincere about what they're teaching. But what I have to do is teach this church what God gave me to teach. Now... He says it's so surprising to Paul how quickly they've left what the apostles gave. See, that's why I like being an apostolic church. All that means is we teach what the apostles taught. And I don't want to get beyond that. I want to stick to what they taught. And it says, the other one is not another, but it says, even if an angel comes. Now, there's lots of angels. How many, how many angels are there? A numeral. Go ahead, girl. She got you this time, Mom. Mom got you the last time. <laughs> the number of angels that there are are innumerable. That's a lot. But how many of them are God's angels? Well, they were all God's angels. But how many are now God's angels? Two-thirds. So that means how many thirds are living for the devil? One-third. You know what that tells us? For every devil that's attacking us, there's two angels got our back. <laughs> I like those odds. Two to one. You can come at me any way you want to, but I got two angels that are there to kick your tail every time you want to come at me. They're right here, right there, and right there. Now come on. I love that. I got spiritual bodyguards. Me, Jim, and Joe. What's up? Devils like to play games. There's lots of demons running around. But for every demon, there's more angels. That should give us some hope. Can I get an amen? amen? But we're talking about the word accursed here. That word scares me. And it said twice. Whenever the Bible repeats itself like that, it means, I mean, it meant what it was saying the first time. But when it says, look, I say again what I said to you already. To me, that's like saying, hey, listen, pay attention. I mean business. And Paul meant business when he said this. Now the reason why I'm bringing this up during the concepts of grace is because grace has been given a lot of different definitions. Grace has been given a lot of descriptions and in this church we're going to stick to the word of God and its description of what grace is. Because if we don't, we are going to be accursed. 
And that's my responsibility in this case to teach something that is not going to bring you a cursing, but a blessing. Can I get amen? amen. Now, <clears throat> Ephesians 2 7, we're going to get back to that in a minute, but I got to go someplace. Ephesians 2 7 says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Who's he? I'm, it's like a quiz day. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll make sure you're paying attention. Who's he? Well, you're right in a way, but God, who is Jesus? <laughs> But God is going to come in Jesus or through Jesus. That's why we call Jesus God. I'm going to get into the oneness of God and what it is. It's going to be called the numerical value of God. I'm going to change the name of my Bible study to get away from some of the um, abuses that have come from some other ministers in the same realm. I want to get away from that. But we're going to, it's just the same doctrine. I'm not going to teach a different doctrine than what they taught. <clears throat> so here it says that we can have the exceeding riches of his grace. Does anybody want that? Yeah. If you want the exceeding riches of his grace, then you cannot step out of his gospel into another that's not really another, which means you can't go to something and say, well, it's close. It's kind of like what you guys do. No, no, I need what the apostles gave and that's it. And that's what we're going to give here in this church. Now the next one is where we're going to get a little bit more in depth about the first scripture that talked about another doctrine. Here it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Does anybody believe that? I do. Why? Because it's written in the Word of God. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't walk old ladies across the street into heaven. You can't donate your way into heaven. You can't do those kind of charitable works or works of man. Remember, we talked about that in depth. If you didn't get it, go to the website. It's called Works of Man and Works of God. In this scripture, it's talking about works of men. But I want to talk about the grace issue. Because see, there is a great multitude of people that teach when this says you're saved by grace through faith, that all it means is that you're saved when you accept God as your personal savior. Has anybody ever heard that I accept the Lord as my personal savior? Has anybody heard the sinner's prayer? Now I'm here to uh, give you a Matrix moment. Anybody ever seen the movie Matrix? Only one saw the movie Matrix? Man, come on, that's what I thought. That's good, huh? I've seen all three of them. I got them. I call it a Matrix moment because for those of you who haven't seen it, you think everything is one way and the next day, just from a, a, a quick transition of information, you learn that the world is not what you thought it was. And so there are so many people out there that go through a matrix moment and quite similar to Keanu Reeves in the movie, they have a similar reaction. What, what happened when he found out the world was not the way he thought it was? What did he do, sister? He freaked out and then what? He popped. I'm trying to be nice. He popped. It wasn't pleasant. It was overwhelming. I understand why that happened. It was overwhelming. But fortunately for most of you in here, it's not so dramatic because you've seen what the scripture has to offer. We've rightly divided the word of truth in this church. But if anyone wants to say that you're saved by grace through faith means that all you have to do is believe and you're saved having a mental uh, understanding that God is God and you believe in God and you're saved then you're misunderstanding the scripture because it says a lot if you believe, believe, believe. But what you need to understand is what the definition of believing is. Because the Bible says those that gladly received this word were baptized. Right? In Acts chapter 2 verse 41 I believe it's 40, 41, 42 right there. Those that gladly received this word were baptized. So if you don't get baptized, Johnny, <laughs> are you hearing things, sis? Are you looking around? If you don't get baptized in the name of Jesus like Jesus was in the water, submerged, coming out of the water, then are you gladly receiving the word? Why do you think every time someone comes in here like, I got water. I got water. Come on, man. Are you ready? Let me tell you how important baptism is to, to, to God. He said that it's a part of your salvation. He says it saves you in 1 Peter 3.21. 
baptism doth also now save us. Now, does it, it's not saying you don't have to repent because you do. It's not saying you don't have to receive the Holy Ghost because you do. But let me tell you, since it's so important to God, why it's so important to me. I want to follow God. Let me tell you my attitude towards baptism. If I teach a baptism Bible study at someone's house, once I'm done, hey, can I fill up your tub? You ready? Let's do it now. Why? Because it's a part of your salvation. And I want to see you go to heaven. And I want to see you see God. So let's get in the water right now. Why wait? The Bible says baptism is for the remission of your sins. It washes your sins away. It says it in no less than two places word for word. Washing your sins away. There's several other references to washing sins away. So if that's true, then I don't play around. Let me give you another example. <clears throat> I had a young lady named Shelby come into this church the other day. She called me. She was out front. She was distressed. Crying. Upset. So I said, what do you want me to do? I'm going to come down and have coffee. What do you need? Because that's the kind of pastor that I am. I think that's what we need to do as servants. I'm a servant. If you call me and you're not drunk, I'll come see you. If you're drunk and high, it's going to be a short conversation. Oh man, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it must be tough. Give me a call tomorrow. But if you're in distress, I believe I should be there and I will be there. So I went. And on the way, I'd already had church three times that day. I had church in the morning. Louisiana. She's going to start watching too, sister. We're going to be in trouble. With the three of us watching, I'm going to have a whole bunch of people watching in the morning by the time I'm done. We will have church in Louisiana. Church of 3,000 with a pastor who's a loving man, who's a man I can identify with. So I get me filled up before I come to church. Then we get to church, and I'm already on fire for God. We have church, and we have all kinds of fun here. Then I go home and have some more church. And I watch the service in the evening service in Louisiana. And now I'm just bubbling with the Holy Ghost. Glowing like I'm pregnant. And I'm not. I know I'm big. But I'm not pregnant. But I'm glowing like I'm pregnant. Just all Holy Ghost. And I get that phone call of a distressed young person, of a daughter of a woman I care about. That's Johnny, Johnny's daughter. And I like Johnny. I like her daughter. And I want to see him in God. So I come rushing to the church. I told my wife on the way, we're going to have church tonight. Again. I'm going to get there. I'm going to read her the word. And we're going to put her in the altar. We're going to pray and have an altar call. And then we're going to baptize her in Jesus' name. She goes, yeah, right. You know my wife. She always, I get, I'm so out there. And she just kind of like, you know, overwhelms her sometimes. So we get there and I said, watch. I get the word and I start teaching. I said, now we're going to put on some music and we come down here, we're going to pray. We start praying. She starts crying, starts seeking God, starts speaking in tongues and got the Holy Ghost sitting right here with nobody else in the building. Just us having church in God right here. So I look at her. She got pink hair and she looking at me and said, but your water's going to turn pink. I said, I don't care. Let's go. Water's freezing. It was chilly when you two got baptized earlier that day. But we hadn't done nothing. But she says, I want to be baptized. So I took her. Let's go. Bloop, in Jesus' name. Stood up, started praising the Lord. And we had church. <laughs> Baptism is important. I want to see her saved. And this church is having revival. So we're going to give the people what they need. But you know what? That's God's grace. Uh, Johnny, has Shelby made any mistakes in her life? <laughs> that's your sister laughing really loud <laughs> uh, confirmation thank you but she has an opportunity like anybody else to connect with God because she followed the word and did what God said mm. so understand listen church that's the word of God Acts 2.38 tells us repent be baptized receive the Holy Ghost it is a salvation message it is the beginning of the New Testament and that's what we did but understand if she came here crying all upset and I called her in here and said come over here and repeat this prayer after me Diane get in here and sit down come on girl don't be going slow if I sat here and said okay now raise your hands and accept Christ just accept them and say, I accept you. Oh, now. I'm going to tell you something, church. She would have missed out on the experience of having God enter inside of her and begin to speak out of her as the Spirit gives the utterance. And she would have not had her sins washed away. It's amazing how quickly even us sometimes go to another doctrine. I've had people, I've taught this, and I, and I haven't had too many, but I've had some that I've taught this doctrine to. They've received it and then they walk away. 
So it's not much different than back then. But we need to make sure that the doctrine that we go into understanding grace.